Rock and roll music is another phase of the changes that come over this passing scene. was a theme song to the Northwest Sound, it had to be Louie Louie. Originally written by Richard Berry, Tacoma's little Bill Englehart, as well as Seattle's Ron Holden and the Playboys, were some of the first acts to play the simple three-chord staple, and the Wailers, with Rockin' Robin Roberts on vocals, had the first hit with it. We all essentially played uh, the, the same tunes of what was on, what was popular, the tunes of the day. But uh, the interesting part uh, I, find, I find quite unique about Northwest music is each band had a definite fingerprint, a definite print of what their music was. Little Bill, he did the very first recording of Louie Louie in the Northwest, and his was true to the original recording. It was more Eclipso style and, and nice and pretty instead of the, the real growly, hard thing. I think my favorite version, and I, we didn't do this version, was the Sonics version of Louie Louie. It was different. They put a minor chord in there and um, it, they, they made it their own. I really like that version. Louie Louie seemed to be in every Northwest band set list at the dances. A friend of mine had given me a copy of the Whalers' Louie Louie. And uh, he said, this is such a cool song, you guys should do this at your dance. And I went, okay. I mean, you know, you can learn it in you know, three seconds. So, okay, yeah, we can do that. And, and the response from the kids was like, it was just amazing. Uh, Rocket Robin and the Whalers had put out uh, Louie Louie on the Etiquette label. And it was huge. KJR, I think they sold 35,000 copies of the record just in the Western Washington market. Uh, they tried to get it out nationally, they did, but nothing happened to the record. Uh, so it, again, it's test marketing in my mind. I think that Louis Louis was going to be a huge hit by somebody. So that's why I wanted to get a version of Louis Louis out, and we were very fortunate. Uh, we were successful. Uh, we actually heard it the first time at uh, it was a teen nightclub in Seaside, which is a little beach resort town here. Uh, we heard a, a version by the Whalers, and it was their song that was being played. Uh, and they had a record out on a local local label out of Seattle or Tacoma, and it was on a jukebox at this teen nightclub, and it it, it just struck us, and so we started playing it as, as an instrumental, and uh, played it as nobody knew the lyrics, so we played it as an instrumental for a long time, and it was kind of the the song everybody got up and danced to. Both Paul Revere and the Raiders and the Kingsmen enjoyed major label national success with this simple, sometimes controversial tune, with the Kingsmen's version generally considered the definitive version. When we released Louie Louie, we did it on our own label. We created a label just to have a vehicle. We released it in Portland, it bounced up to Seattle. Uh, all of a sudden it was spreading in the Northwest, much like the Whalers had done before. So here we come out with Louie Louie on Columbia Records. I was so excited to be on Columbia Records, but I didn't realize that they didn't know what they had. And they didn't really know how to promote the song, a, a rock and roll song like that. And uh, so while they were trying to figure it out, uh, the Kingsman, they got on Wand Records, which was very tuned into uh, how to connect the, the rock and roll market. And uh, we came out, and unbeknownst to each other, we'd both recorded the song in the same studio in Portland uh, within about a week of each other. And uh, within another couple of weeks of each other, the, the record did come out. And so we were battling, uh, uh, the, uh, the Louis Louis battle was going on. And uh, uh, they, they just had an incredible, uh, great, fortunate situation in that uh, they started getting uh, major airplay in a lot of major cities uh, in the East Coast and whatnot, and wham, they, they, it just locked in. They, they had 
a runaway monster hit that to this day is it's going to be a classic for eternity. Well, within a period of six months, the group was hot on the West Coast. The record went to number one in San Francisco. It uh, uh, hit uh, the top ten in Honolulu. It was moving up in L.A. But then we were derailed because the label didn't know what to do with rock and roll, and they thought, well, a song like this couldn't really make it, so they dropped it in the East, and, of course, that momentum was picked up by the Kingsmen. So between the Kingsmen and the Raiders, we shared America, but they shared the biggest portion of that. There's more fiction than there is fact of anybody's knowledge of Louie Louie. Well, fortunately, I was there. I was the guy who did it, so I do know the facts. The fact of Louie Louie breaking in Boston was real simple. Uh, I had a friend who was in the wholesale record distribution business, he was kind of my peer group buddy. He hated the record, but I asked him if he would try to get it on the air for me. Uh, and this is about six months after I released it. See, I released it in May of 1963, and that's when we were on the air in Portland. It took me several months to kind of convince other people that the record was a real record. The Northwest music was breaking out and people were following it. But most of the conversation about the Kingsman was about lyrics. You know, we were accused of corrupting the moral fiber of the youth of America by J. Edgar Hoover, and we were banned in Indiana, which really got us to success. Nobody can plan on being banned. I don't know if the Kingsman ever would have been successful had the band not taken place with Louis Louie. We were banned in New England and in Indiana, and, and it made the UPAP. And by the time that that whole thing died down, we had sold millions of records and we were out touring and it created a career. Now it's kind of a, a mixture of all of us and we're all friends with each other and we look back on those years as just being the Louie Louie years. It, it was great because it, that song kind of just put all three of us uh, on the map. Within two months of joining that group, uh, Louie Louie went from being a zero to the number one conversation piece around the country. There was something, there was something about that song. There was something about Louie Louie that was just gutty and gritty. There was some kind of a magic in those three notes. Louie Louie may have been born elsewhere, but the Northwest has certainly claimed it as our own.